Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Mondays with Mate, the last one for the interesting year of 2020. Uh, it was a good year for us, despite all of the crazy things and challenges going on. Uh, so thank you for following us throughout the whole year, through our episodes and everything else that has been going on. So we have a very special episode today. Uh, we are making a big step in the C2 development program. Uh, as you know, we are building lots of prototypes for different purposes and we are sharing all of that with you. But uh, today we are basically starting with the production of uh, the pre-series cars, which is uh, pretty much the same, let's say, as the production cars, as the cars the customer will get in the end. So we started with, let's say, a show car and box. So we were building like an aerodynamic box for the wind tunnel, uh, different parts of the car to test separately, like the front of the car for the crash, the rear of the car and so on. And after that, we built the experimental prototypes. So two running cars and one car for the crash testing. Uh, this was more than like one and a half years ago, where we started to, to drive those cars and they are still being driven. Of course, one was crashed. And then we built eight uh, validation prototypes. Two of them are still on the production line. Six of them are built and being used for various testing. Some of them were also crashed, unfortunately, in the, in the development program. And most of them will be crashed in the end. And these are the first of the pre-series where we are building six more cars, which will be mostly used for homologation and the final testing. And when we see something there that we might want to do differently, we will do some changes, but basically this should be like the final car. Where we are today is our zone zero. So this is part of the assembly line, but it's in a different location. This room is in our headquarters in Sveta Nedja, while the production line where we will go later is in Veliko Trgovišće, which is like half an hour from here. Uh, why are we having it in two separate places? One uh, reason is space, but also because here we have our paint shop and our composites production, so the, the carbon fiber. So here we try to do all of the things related to the carbon fiber, and then in Veliko Trgovišće we assemble the car together. What happens here is the bare monocoque arrives here, and then basically the zone zero has two zones itself, uh, or two stations. So station one there, you need lots of attachment points, basically brackets and rivets and stuff like that, to put all the different parts onto the monocoque, uh, both like body and interior parts, but also uh, cables or like uh, pumps and fans, whatever, uh, all the different thousands of components that go onto the car. So what the guys first do here, they take some kind of jigs and uh, fixtures that help them to position the different brackets and bond them onto the monocoque. There is 776 of those different attachment points that they have to put on the car here. So long manual process uh, where they have to be really precise to fit every uh, part where it needs to be because that also determines the fit and finish later. The monocoque already has hundreds of attachment points itself, like for example, for the suspension parts. So this is actually laminated aluminum pieces inside of the monocoque and then machined. So there was a big CNC machine machining the inserts here for the important and big uh, pieces that come to the monocoque, like for example, the, the suspension. So structural elements where you need lots of structure. Um, we have the same for, for example, for the powertrain or for the steering rack. So for these, let's say, big elements like the seat and the steering column, those have already attachment points inside of the monocoque. But for most of other components, because there's hundreds of, of other components that come on the monocoque, uh, we use brackets and studs and stuff like that to mount them. And this is what we use these uh, fixtures for. So you basically align the fixture with uh, known points on the monocoque. That can be, for example, the suspension um, attachment point. And you align it so that you know how to bond the different brackets where they need to be. So there is lots of um, fixtures that the guys are using, like these, uh, to position it correctly, to put it in the right place. And then they know which clip and which bracket to position exactly where relative to the other attachment points. Later, the exact position of these brackets is confirmed by scanning the whole monocoque and comparing the scan with the 3D data. Once those brackets and fixtures are, are done here and fi fixation points are bonded to the monocoque, the monocoque goes to the next station here where we are fitting the exterior and interior to the car. Uh, there's basically two ways of doing it. Different hypercar companies do it in a different way. Um, one way of doing it is like this, where that exact monocoque and that exact body are getting fitted together. 
The other way of doing it is to have a generic buck or cubing model where you fit the body panels onto something that is representing the tolerances of the monocoque. Uh, we decided to do it in this way because we can achieve a better alignment and a better quality. Uh, but we are also maybe thinking to do it the other way. We'll see in the future, but this is how we do it now. So the interior and exterior gets fitted here. The guys make sure that all the gaps um, are right, that everything is flush, that it's what it needs to be. Um, it gets scanned multiple times with a 3D scanner in the process. And then once everything is fitted here, um, the parts are disassembled, the body panel goes to painting, um, the monocoque goes to painting as well, because for example, this surface of the monocoque is actually the roof, so there is no other panel that comes here, this is actually what you see, so the roof is the monocoque. Um, so that gets painted in the, in the color of the car, but then the monocoque itself is also a visible part in many areas, especially in the interior. So it gets clear coat um, or like a matte or, or glossy finish, depending what the customer wants. And lots of other pieces of the monocoque are being uh, visible. Uh, for example, when you open up the door, the sill is visible and so on. So the monocoque gets painted, the body panels get painted in the customer color. And then uh, they meet again later in one of the stations at the production line that we'll later see. Uh, important to say, when we have a painted uh, car, the carbon fiber pieces have this gel coat on, which makes it easier uh, to paint them later, and the paint finish gets better. But when we have a fully visible carbon car, which is also an option that we offer to the customers, we have to match all of the different uh, carbon fiber pieces so that the weaves align between the different body panels between different parts, like the monocoque and the door, the door and the rear bonnet, and little pieces everywhere. So that's a much more difficult job. This is being matched here as well, but of course the people building the different carbon fiber pieces need to, to know how to put the weaves so that they align between the different parts of the car. So here, uh, this car, this is the first pre-series car. It will be soon finished uh, with this station. The parts will go to painting, and after that, this monocoque goes to the production line in Veliko Trgovišće. It starts with zone one, where we put on the, the wiring harness and the power train, and then zone two, zone three, zone four. We have four zones until the car is built. So we'll go now to Veliko Trgovišće and show you how that looks like. Welcome to our production location in Veliko Trgovišće, half an hour away from our headquarters in Sveta Nedelja. Here we have, amongst other things, the production line for the C2, where the cars are put together. But this is where we are just assembling stuff. Uh, the other parts are being made around the company, both in our headquarters and here, and also some other locations. Here's where all parts come together. On the production line, we are assembling currently prototypes. These two here that you see are the last two validation prototypes and you can already see station one waiting for the first pre-series car, uh, which will start its journey there, where we are assembling the wiring harness and fasteners to the car, then station two, where the powertrain and suspension come into the car, station three, where we mount the battery pack and get basically the functions of the car going, and station four for the body panels before it goes off to the first uh, checks. So we have a light tunnel and a dyno to check the car uh, on the running road, and we are building outside uh, a facility to test for water tightness and do some, let's say, uh, final corrections on the paint is, if something is wrong there, because our paint shop is in Svetanelia, so we don't want to ship the cars between the two locations, so we are building a little paint shop here to correct if there's any mistakes in the paint or any damages to the paint during the assembly. As you can see, out of the four stations we have currently, just two are full with cars. Uh, one just left the facility recently and we are waiting for the pre-series car on station one. Uh, but we have some nice footage of when the line was full a few days ago. But still things are going slower than they are supposed to in production. We are still in pre-series and prototype production, so the pace is not at where it should be. But the line is produced in a way that we can make one car, or basically two cars per week, one C2 and the rolling chassis for Pinifarina. Uh, so the car should shift from station to station every week. Just like with Zone Zero, where you have two different ways of doing it, and we have chosen for one of them, the same is with assembly. You will see some other hypercar manufacturers making cars in a nest principle, 
where cars are basically at the same spot or the monocoque is at the same spot while the parts are being brought to it and the car doesn't basically move until it's finished. We have a line concept with these four lifts uh, because we have uh, quite a higher production uh, volume than some other small hypercar makers and we want uh, to have a stable process from station to station where the same step can be done by the same people for every car so they can really perfect in those steps because the car is very complicated and there needs to be lots of stuff done at every station. Lots of electronics, lots of computers, lots of software. So at every station we basically have also some commissioning. So during the assembly we are bringing to life different parts of the system because if you, for example, figure out that the hydraulic line is leaking when the battery and powertrain are already there, we have to disassemble half the car to repair that hydraulic line. So the hydraulics, for example, for the active aerodynamics are tested um, at an earlier phase before, for example, a battery gets into the car. Let's talk about these beautiful validation prototypes at the last two ones that we are building. As you can see, this car will be a beautiful gray prototype, while the one behind it um, on station two is going to be a bright yellow car. You will probably never see them really in this shape, like uh, uncamouflaged. As soon as they, they come off the line, we are putting camouflage on them because we still didn't present the final production car. Once we present the production car, we'll take off the camouflage from all the cars. But probably at that time, this car will already be crashed in a crash testing facility. As you know, we are doing a very extensive development program where we need to test a lot of things and satisfy the global homologation standards. So we have a very detailed plan for every car, basically every day and every second is already planned for these cars. So when this car gets off the line, of course it gets tested and we start it up first and get all the systems to work flawlessly. And then we have a testing program, for example, cold weather testing or aerodynamic tunnel or testing on different racetracks for performance, for durability, for water protection, for water ingress, tens of different or hundreds of different tests that we are doing at the same time. And then after a few months, this car will be crashed in a testing facility for the global certification process that we are doing. What we are doing here at the same time here on this line, uh, on this station on the line is commissioning. So this is what's basically getting all the different parts of the system of the car to life. So for example, a technician mounts a pump and connects it with the radiators and with the other systems connects the wiring harness, but then we need to make sure that the ECU that's connected to that pump, that's controlling that pump, is actually communicating, that it's doing its job, that it's communicating to the other ECUs. We are making sure that the infotainment system works, that the screens are getting all the information they should, and all the other hundreds of ECUs that are in this car that are working properly. Of course, in production, it will not look like that, that the engineers are sitting next to the car for hours or for days to get systems working, but it will be a more streamlined process. But this is prototype production still. So things like that are improving during the prototype production. And this is also, you're not just developing the car and improving the car, but also developing the processes and the tools and the procedures during production and everything around it to make this work. Just getting thousands of parts here on, the, on this line, producing them around the company and sourcing different parts, bringing them here in the right sequence in the right time is a huge uh, challenge. So just to do that is also a big, big task. So while producing the cars, you're building basically the company and the organization around it that can support the pace of production that's planned here. So here we can see the last validation prototype taking shape. Uh, I like this part of the production process really because you can still see the bare carbon fiber monocoque and some very interesting pieces of the technology. The powertrain is in there, the wiring harness, uh, you can see the DC-DC converter and the supercomputer, the NVIDIA supercomputer that we are using for autonomous driving. So the nine cameras and the under sensors are feeding their information to that unit to enable the autonomous driving system to work. We can see already the front suspension and the HVAC inside and so on. So as soon as this car is finished, we are done with the validation prototypes. And as I said, the uh, pre-series cars are starting. And that's the last step before we start finally uh, the series production for our customers. So we'll have uh, a lot of cars rolling off of this line if everything goes according to our plan, we hope. Um, it's a huge process, complex process, huge project where hundreds of people are working every day for years. 
And you know, that's quite hard with such projects because we started with the project three and a half, four years ago, and you are looking at every bit of the car from every aspect f on screens for years. And you see little bits and pieces, and you know, prototype works, but you know, not all the people have a ride in the car and so on. So you have so many problems, you face so many issues, things you didn't expect. But finally, seeing it come to life is now, I think, a great experience for everybody involved. Um, I think everybody put a little bit on themselves in this car. So you have you know, the, the life of hundreds of people in, embedded in this car over the last few years. So they have invested a big chunk of their life into the car. And I think in the end we can be very proud of it. Uh, we are coming to an end of the project or basically start of production when we are finally ready to ship cars to customers. Uh, and despite 2020 being as it was, uh, it was a good year for us for many reasons, but one of them is that we had a lot of progress in the C2 project, where we are coming now really close to the series production. And in 2021, we'll finally see the production car. We'll be so happy to show it to you and to share uh, all the great things that this car can do, and hopefully getting the first customers also to get their cars soon after that. So we are very much looking forward to 2021. I hope it will be better for everybody, for the whole world, than 2020 and um, keep following us keep asking questions we'll be very happy to answer them as always uh, wish everybody a great christmas great holidays uh, relax and uh, happy new year